Hi. Uh, so in January of 1994, Tanya Harding and I were living very different lives. Uh, <laughs> Tanya Harding at the time was a top-tier uh, top American figure skater from a rough background in Portland, Oregon. She was known for her raw power and athleticism. She was the first woman to do a triple axel in an international competition. Um, and she was on the verge of the biggest scandal of her career. I was seven years old and I was living in Dryden, Ontario with my father. I was unathletic. I was vaguely shaped like a root vegetable, um, and I spent most of my time staring out the window and hoping to be abducted by aliens. Um, I couldn't even skate. In a town where hockey is like a religion, I couldn't skate. I had tried, I had taken classes uh, for a year, and I remember on the last day of the class, our pass-fail test was everyone had to do a trick, do a trick for your, your class. And we were lined up watching everybody, like one kid, um, like he crouched and skated by everyone, like that was his trick. And another person, like they were really good, they skated backwards for a couple of feet, that was their trick. And I remember it was my turn and I did this huge loop to gain speed and I was at like top maximum velocity coming back in front of my whole class and I realized I have no idea what I'm gonna do. Like I had no, <laughs> so I just threw my body into the air and went completely horizontal and just landed on the ice like I had been shot with a rifle. And uh, so they took me off the ice and I've never skated again. Anyway, my, my point is that Tanya Harding and I were not like peas in a pod, but what we did share was we were both envious people. We were both jealous people. I was always a really jealous kid and not like garden variety jealous. Like I was like wine dark, Lady Macbeth jealous. Like, uh, like Katie Allerhead in, my, uh, Allerhead in my class, she could conjugate French verbs really well. It wasn't enough, that I just, I didn't want just to conjugate verbs like her, I wanted her to not be able to do that. Um, but I think the thing is, when you're a kid, like you're not taught about jealousy, you're not taught like what it is, how to deal with it, that it's natural and everybody feels it. Uh, you're taught that its methods are kind of taboo, you're taught not to lie, not to steal. Um, not to cut up Katie Allerhead's snow pants while they're hanging in the class <laughs> change room. Uh, but because of that, like, I thought I was the only person in the world that felt this way. Like, nobody else had this weird deformity of character and that I was just, like, doomed to wander the earth like Frankenstein, like, envying other people's haircuts or, like, their vertical jump or, like, stuff like that. Uh, so when I saw Tanya Harding on TV for the first time, it was like, there is another. Like, it was like that part in, uh, if you ever read the book, The Chrysalids in School, like where the psychic kids like reach out and they see other psychic kids and they're like, where do we begin and you end? And like, I, <laughs> like I was watching her and I knew she was accused of conspiring with her ex-husband to hire a man to hit and maim Nancy Kerrigan in the knee uh, right before the 1994 Olympics in Lillehammer. And, I just immediately fell in love with her, like <laughs> head over heels. Like I, anytime she was on the news, like my face would be pressed against the TV or like I like drew her name in my notebooks, which by the way in Dryden is not like a scheme for social ascendancy to be writing a figure skater's name in your notebook. Um, but I really thought like we would run away together. Like I thought she would do her inevitable tour of Northwestern Ontario pulp and paper mill towns. And <laughs> we would like lock eyes and we would like escape the paparazzi and we'd wind up in like a cottage on a Scottish moor and just like live happily forever after together. Like two jealous people making it work. Uh, which didn't happen. Um, and I got to grow up and like deal with my feelings of jealousy and how to make that work in the world on my own, in private. But Tanya Harding didn't get that. She was the poster girl for jealousy and envy and vindictiveness. And she had to live that for the rest of her life. Like, she will have to live that for the rest of her life. And in the public eye, too, because it doesn't help that her life has been crazy since she left figure skating. All right, I'm gonna just, these are just some highlights, but September 1994, Tanya Harding and her ex-husband Jeff Galuli try and sell a sex tape to Penthouse Magazine. Um, August 90, or no, sorry, June 94, she appears in Portland, Oregon at a pro wrestling 
uh, event managing a group called Los Gringos Locos. Uh, <laughs> September 95, her band The Golden Blaze is booed off stage while performing a Madonna cover. Uh, August 96, she uh, saves a woman's life in a Portland bar who was playing video poker and had a heart attack. Uh, 2003, she debuts as a pro boxer on the undercard of a Mike Tyson fight. Her current uh, record is four wins and three losses. Uh, 2009, in a refurbished Model T uh, model A Ford called Lickety Split. She sets the North American land speed record at the Bonville Salt Flats. She drives 97 miles per hour. Uh, she divorces. She remarries. She divorces again. She remarries. She has a son. She publishes erotic fan fiction on her website. She makes decorative fire starters by dipping pine cones in scented wax. She's just like, she keeps busy this whole time. And for a long time, as an adult, this is all I had left of my connection with Tanya Harding was like these articles that would come up online or like a weird story someone would tell me. And I thought like maybe just like our time, like our paths had crossed like ships in the night and there's just like nothing left uh, between the two of us. But then last year I was in New York visiting a friend and they told me they could get me into the Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan 1994 Museum. Uh, which is a museum run out of two people's apartments in Brooklyn. Uh, so I go alone, and it's in Williamsburg, of course, uh, which I'm sure some people know, but it's like the Jersey Shore for people who look like Ezra Pound or whatever. And like, I go, and it's just this hallway in these two lovely people's apartments, and there's photos of Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding blown up on the wall, and there's National Enquirer, covers and there's some like Nancy Kerrigan trading cards and it's like on one wall is all Nancy Kerrigan and on the other wall is all Tanya Harding um, except for this one spot where there's these beautiful needlepoint portraits of them and they're like they're facing away and I was standing in front of it and I'm looking at Tanya and <laughs> she's like it's young Tanya like she has makeup and she's uh, just like kind of looking up and away like kind of to the the future, an infinite possibility, and I'm looking at it, and I realize that I'm weeping. <laughs> like, visibly weeping like an insane person. And everyone else there is like on a Tinder date, or like a little bit high, and like everyone's kind of guilty about it. And I'm like, and I'm like trying to stop it, but it's just like my life and her life, and the triple axel and Katie Allahead verb conjugation, like it's coming out, like I can't stop it. And so it was just like tears are streaming down my face. So I did the only thing I could think of, and I, like, I just ran. Like I turned away from the portrait of Nancy stupid face Kerrigan and Tanya <laughs> ass kicking Harding. And I just like ran down the stairs and out of the apartment. Um, and like took the subway home. And I was sitting there puffy. It's like, what just happened to me? <laughs> and I realized it was because I want to remember Tanya Harding like she was in that photograph. Like, vulnerable, stubborn, full of self-doubt, but like ready to fight her way out of any corner that's put her in. I don't want this clickbait version of Tanya Harding. Uh, so I want to end with a quotation from a sign that a fan held up at the Lillehammer 1994 <laughs> Winter Olympics. Um, and it was a very simple sign on cardboard written in magic marker, and it said, I love Tanya Harding. Deal with it, America. <laughs> Thanks.